All right, Shalom Akim. Hey, Yah Bashem Al Shai, broke a thumb to my dear brothers out there, you little amount of sisters, worshiping Yah Bashem Al Shai in spirit and in truth. All praises to Yah Bashem Al Shai, the bunch of the apostles over there, great millstone and peace and mercy uh, to the elect. Another news, madness, prophecy, and encouragement. All right, and today is uh, September 14th. All right, and, um, the first video I have queued up here is that one of the brothers, he sent this out. Of a, a woman basically arming herself in one of these countries, robbing it, wanting to um, rob the bank for the money for her money that's in the bank. Peep it. Um, this is actually put up by a channel called Hebrew Israelite Yehovah, and uh, the the editor put. Uh, Isaiah 10 and 1 Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees And that right grievousness which they have prescribed Haggai 1 and 6 You have so much and bring in little You eat but you have not You drink but you are not filled with drink You clothe you but you are not warm You earn wages and he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put him They're in a bag with holes. In two separate incidents, hours apart, armed people enter banks demanding their own money. Lebanon is in crisis. For three years, people haven't been able to access their savings because of informal capital controls. Sally Hafiz is among them. Armed with a handgun, she was accompanied by activists who threatened bank employees before she was given $13,000 from her account. In this country, this is the only way to get our money back. We didn't steal this money. We worked hard to earn it. Sally says she needs the money to pay for her sister's cancer treatment. In a similar incident last month, an armed man named Bassam al-Sheikh Hassan held hostages at a bank for nearly 10 hours before receiving part of his trapped savings. He too said he needed money to pay for his father's hospital bill. Many others like Sally and Bassam, who are facing strict limits on withdrawals of foreign currency, gathered outside the bank after the incident. So you brothers and you sisters see it. You see it, man. You can continue watching the video. It's called Economic Crisis Armed Woman and Activists Hold Up a Bank. So that this took place over there in Lebanon, okay? You see how them people are angry. And that same anger is going to be on all the citizens of the world, all the people of the world, all the people of America, because um, that's what your elites of your society is going to drive you to. It's called order out of chaos, a Latin phrase that they came up with. All right. So you see that around the world that just the, the, the economic just cycling of the world is falling. You have these people over there in Lebanon hours apart holding up banks, you know, holding up banks different periods of time. There is activists with them and getting their money and they in this and they're saying because they need to handle their business as far as sick family members you know helping out their themselves and they angry over there holding out holding up banks this is the second um this is second um second address 15 and in um in 15 it says for the sword and the destruction Draw of nigh, and one people should stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hand. And it says, For there should be sedition among men and invading one another. They should not regard their kings or princes, and the course of their actions should stand in their power. So, we're seeing a little glimpse of that just off of this video. The people are rising up against the government, people are fighting one against another. And this is going to take place in the United States of America and all around the world. Um, when people start realizing their bank, all the money in the bank is froze, their assets are frozen and, you know, all this chaotic stuff that's taking place, they're going to go mad, man. And they're going to pull out them guns. Like the scriptures say, they're going to have them swords. So yeah, man, you see, it's, it's a lot going on. You could just add that to the arsenal of 
everything else that's going on, the natural disasters that's taking place and everything. Matter of fact, check this out. Uh, I peeped this. Um, over there in New York, they certain parts of New York, they woke up to fat flash floods. until 7.30 a.m. Oh Authorities have warned people not to drive on flooded roads and to climb higher ground if necessary. An overnight storm led to the suspension of subway traffic in Brooklyn. The flood also closed several boulevards in Brooklyn and Queens. The Long Island Expressway was also affected where water lifted manhole covers and flooded the road. The highway was also flooded near Maurice Avenue, Grand Central Parkway, and the Van Wyck Expressway. Firefighters made several rescues and were able to push most of the vehicles. You know, you brother see it. You know, just flash floods are taking place all over um, just the United States, period. You know, not just New York, but over here in California and different other states and all around the world, Pakistan, France, you know, just flash floods. And that, this is Second Edges 9 and 2. We always go here. It says, Then shall thou understand that this is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there are seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou understand that the Most High spoke of those things from the, from the days that were before the even from the beginning. So, you know, it just happened in back to back. Things are taking place back to back. The Heavenly Father is showing that he's uh he's making it happen for us, man. You know, it's the kingdom is being destroyed naturally by natural disasters. People are getting pushed on the edge, and it's just gonna continue to increase, man. It's gonna continue to increase. Now, peep this. I have found this. Um, this is a testimony about I guess a guy. He may have been an ex pastor. You know, I just had seen it and I thought it was good to to report on it, but. He basically explained, um, you know, how the, the Christian church is dealing with that witchcraft. All right. And know whether he's if this guy is lying about his story or testimony or not, it really doesn't matter because there that really take this is what he's going to explain. It really goes on in the church amongst to become a pastor. You got to be a mason. You got to worship Satan. Now, peep this. It says, I experienced Baphomet, the goat, at church. Let's do it again. Something happened. Once you've experienced something yourself, you don't care if people think you're crazy. I experienced Baphomet at church. Started preaching at 18. By 19, I was told I was the senior pastor. I noticed I got all of the responsibility, I got all of the blame, but I had no rights, I had no ability to affect change, I was just a puppet. From 19 to 22, I went through pure hell. Then when I was 22, we had a meeting, and the gist of the meeting is to disqualify all the males in the church. I was young, so I didn't realize what was happening. I was experiencing the spirit of Athaliah in real time. Eventually, 22 years old, I said, I quit. I, I can't do it anymore. The founder of the church looked at me, and this is when it happened. He said, son, when I was a mason, someone would come in and be a uh, inner apprentice, then a fellow craftsman. And when it was time to get his third degree, he had to ride the goat. And when a young man, he didn't want to go through what he had to go through to get his third degree, we had to make him ride the goat because he knew too many of our secrets. That's when the leader said to me, son, you got to ride the goat. What I should have said was, this is a church and not a Masonic Lodge, and Jesus separate the sheep from the goat. But because
because I didn't understand word curses at the time, I said, okay. After that, church services looked crazy to me. I would preach and people would dance and shout and speak in tongues and roll on the floor. And I would go sit down while they was in the middle of the service dancing and just say to myself, what are they doing? What are we doing? My mind was slipping. Next thing you know, I started acting out. I, I started acting crazy. I cut out on my wife. I destroyed my family. I, I cut out on my marriage. It, it was just, it was horrible. I, and I didn't understand what was happening. I was spiraling and going all kinds of directions. Eventually, I said, man, I, I give up. I, I'm going to just show everybody what this really is. I'm going to let everybody know, hey, if you want a demon, I'm going to show you a demon. But God in his infinite grace god in his great mercy cut through everything i was experiencing through those years and said ray you still have a soul and when i heard that voice cut through in my heart i was delivered from a life of debauchery be careful with your souls a lot of you think that stuff is only over there in entertainment it's right there in the churches too People who are supposed to be over you and speaking life into you can be the ones that releases word curses into your life. Be careful, your soul is precious. <laughs> your brothers and sisters uh, was peeping his little testimony, and at the end he said he 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 was thankful that the Lord got him out of that life of debauchery, because that's exactly what the 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 Negro church is, the Latino church. It's just a a party. A, a party of debauchery, you know, a life of debauchery. That's all it is because in the churches, you're not really worshiping the God of the Bible. You know, you have this um, this cloak like you're worshiping the God of the Bible, but really you're doing you're doing what you want to do. You know what I mean? And that's why he he, exp he he's explaining to you that, look, in order to become that pastor, you have to become a Mason. You know? You have to become a mason in order to become a pastor. And um, uh, the, the churches are under a, um, a tax charter that's uh, uh, that's under the... Uh, they under a tax charter, the 501c3 tax charter. That's what they're under. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay? Which is government regulations on the church. They only can teach what the government allowed them. And, the, and to become a pastor, you got to... You, you moving up in levels of masonry, as he explaining. And he said when he was young, he didn't understand it. But he became the leader in just a year. He became a, the head the head pastor in a year. You know, he said he it led him it led him to mess his whole little um the the marriage he had up with his woman. And I, I'm pretty sure why is because he was dealing with other other chicks. He was dealing with all the chicks in the in the um in the in the church. You know, getting money, living it up debauchery he was living debauchery and that's what we try to explain to you jakes out there look that church is no good man it's no good from the pastor to the to the to the fine woman walking around it's all about debauchery it's all about self-worship and it's all governed under the uh the edomite rulership government all right the united states government this is isaiah 9 and 16 it says for the leaders of this people caused them to err and they that are led of them are destroyed. You see? All right, and those churches, those leaders in your churches, they're going to lead you to death. They're going to lead you to death. You know? They're going to lead you right to death. Listen to what this dude. And said, Ray, you still have a soul. And when I heard that voice cut through in my heart, I was delivered from a life of debauchery. <laughs> Be careful with your souls. A lot of you think that stuff is only over there in entertainment. It's right there in the churches too. You heard what he said? A lot of y'all think it's just an entertainment. Uh, that, that, that debaucherous life of people worshiping Satan and getting money and all that. Nah, man, your, your church pastors is doing the same thing. Just like he explained it. And if he really did, if the, hey, he he ain't in the truth, but the most side does have mercy on certain people to, you know, they say friends, they get stuck on drugs. The only father may have enough mercy. He doesn't show them the truth, but he'll take the demon off them and they get off drugs 
or even in this guy, this guy's case, he, uh, the Lord probably really did take him out of, um, you know, being that, de that debaucherous man in, 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 uh, robbing the church the way he was. He probably really got the demon off him, you know what I mean? But he still ain't in the truth though. You know what I'm saying? We even have an example of that with Legion. The Lord cast all the demons out of Legion, but he told Legion that he couldn't follow him, you know? But this is Matthew 15 and 4, 14. It says, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind shall lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. So all them people in that church that's not going to uh, come to the truth of, of, of the God of the Bible, they're going to be led all into a ditch. You know, so I thought that was pretty crazy because, hey, you got to become a mason. And that should trigger Jake to get the freak out of there, man. But see, Jake want a party. Like they had the video where um, dude opened the, the door up. It was a church, but it looked like the inside of a club, man. It looked like the inside of an Atlanta club. You know what I mean? Madness. But, man, let me see. Uh, last little thing I had here was, uh, man, I see this. And I was like, man, look at this madness. Look at Esau fucking weird ass. This dude's a weirdo, man. Look at this dude. This dude eating the mud off of the shoe, man. Wow. You know? Wow. <laughs> I got two scriptures. scriptures. Let's go to Habakkuk real quick. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. You know, and that shows you that, and that's talking about Esau, Edom, the separate claim white man. His soul ain't right. Look at this dude, you know. And these are the ones, these are the guys who, who, um, they rule over us, or they rule over us. And what he's doing right here is nothing compared to what the elites of the society is really doing. The way they uh, drink human uh, blood and all this extra, uh, you know, hydrina chrome. I, I, I forget what it's called, but you know what I mean? They do far worse things. But this is the this is the Edomites. This is the one that rule over us, and this is what we have to deal with, man. This is Isaiah chapter 3, um, verse 12. It says, as for my people, children are their oppressors. This is the child... Ruling over us. This Edomite is a child. A big, bad, evil child, man. You know? Like that one song. It's my party. I could cry if I want to. Cry if I want to. That's from the uh, the movie The Problem Child, man. It's just an evil Edomite. Just a little evil Edomite, man. And he's the one that's ruling us. And that's why the world is just in a terrible state it is. And us Israelites, we're just oppressed because children are oppressors, it says, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. And this guy is a part of, he's the main dude destroying our paths. And I don't, I don't understand it, man. God damn. <laughs> you know, but yeah, hey, brothers, hey. Y'all be trying to shout That's all I have for today. You brother and you sisters out there, stay strong. Um, to the next time, Shalom, Makim Step. Watch and pray. Shalom.